Howdy, I'm Riley, and I'm here to basically cry at how amazing TFF or Texas Furry Fiesta was for me as an artist. Now, I did mean to vlog a little bit, but with how rapid and uncertain the process was for vending, I got absolutely no footage. So you'll just be getting a speed paint instead for this one. I'll throw out some photos I took at the event for some flavor though. Now let's begin. I'll talk about the culture and how artists are treated very differently here than at anime conventions later on this video, but can I just say, I'm not sure how I'll be able to go back to anime cons after this. For some background info, yes, I'm a furry, but since living on my own and stuff, I've more or less departed from the fandom due to the busyness of life and haven't really interacted with the subculture in over four years. This year, I've started to really want to go to a furry con just for my own sake, even if I didn't end up bending. So when TFF was announced and I realized it was local to me, I jumped at the opportunity. Quick info about the event. TFF 2024 took place at the Sheraton Hotel in downtown Dallas, and that was technically a four-day convention, but Artist Alley only took place that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The batch for all of the days was $80, and the booth fee to vend was $20 a day. Now, you may notice I said a day. Let me explain. TFF implements a lottery system for Artist Alley, so basically you have to check in on Friday before the lottery begins, make sure they have all your info, and you get a ticket. And you get to sit there in the dealer's hall and wait for the staff to start calling numbers. If your number gets called, you are supposed to claim a table that is open and keep that card that they have on that. And then once all the tables are claimed, they take your payment for the table and mark where your table is at. For Saturday and Sunday, you will be picked the previous night and they'll post it at the board and social media. But they did not do that for Saturday for some reason. So, let's talk about the mishaps and general planning for this artist alley. This isn't really a slight against anyone running the, behind the scenes, by the way. It was just really confusing to me as an artist trying to sell. This was probably the most confusing process I've ever run into. First off, the Twitter account would announce things that were happening as well as the location. However, for some reason, for Artist Alley, there was no place on the website or the Twitter account that I could find on Friday that stated where I needed to be for Artist Alley. The location had been left blank on the tweet, so imagine the stress I had about getting there and signed in before the lottery began when I had to lug my suitcase and my giant wagon with a heavy tote on it around the hotel, try to figure out where the hell I needed to be, I'd also wait six minutes for an elevator to go down a single floor. I was really stressed out about possibly missing signups. But I managed to find it. I put in my info on the website early so I didn't have to fill out any forms, just signing saying it was me and I was given my ticket with my number and waited. Now, this hall is open to general attendees, by the way. So there is like half the hall filled with artists and all of our stuff, but there is also half of the attendees just chilling out in the hallway, which kind of made up for an interesting setup experience. So typically for anime cons, you are given a window of a couple of hours or so to set up your booth, and then with most of the cons, you are forced to sit there for an hour when VIP badges opens and you kind of feel depressed because there are no people in that convention hall that want to buy your stuff, and it can really diminish the mood. But having the attendees freely hang out in the convention area while we set up was both nice and also kind of stressful. There was no ramp up period between setting up and waiting for your sales to start like at anime cons. If your display was even partially in the process of setting up, you may have potential buyers already. Honestly, in my experience, they will ask if you are ready to take orders, if you are still in kind of the limbo phase of walking around and moving stuff, but it honestly felt nice to have people look at my stuff and want to buy from me before I even officially started vending. Something to note about this artist alley space is that you are limited to four feet of a table. Essentially, we have these long rows filled with eight foot tables all next to each other and you and your neighbor are meant to only take up four feet of that space. This may cause some issues if you have a lot of stock. I was honestly worried that the panels I put in the inner area wouldn't receive much sales because that's what I was used to for four foot setups. But once again, in comparison to anime fans, furries actually look at the items that you have. I honestly sold the same volume and frequency of the items on the side panels as I did on the front facing panels. Now the downside of this four foot space is that not everyone is going to be respectful of the space that is allocated to them. There were some vendors who definitely went over the four foot limit and ended up cramming the rest of us together, but it was okay, I guess. It was just kind of inconsiderate, honestly. If it was like 
not as stressful as it was just even setting up and like they were really taking up a whole lot of space maybe i would have talked to the artist alley heads but honestly it wasn't that big of a deal another issue i have with the table setup is that no one really tucks their bags away now the inner artist alley table like the row between like the artists on either side it's actually quite spacious i especially in comparison to something like Dallas Fan Expo where they really sardined us in, but I personally wish that a lot of fellow vendors moved their bulky items either besides them or close to their backs or under the tables. There was a great deal of difficulty in moving in and out of the space both days for me. I'd watch out for stuff like that if you're like mobility is impaired and try to see if you can snag a corner table or ask for one due to accommodations. Now, my neighbors were the sweetest ever. I think it cannot get be stated enough how friendly the furry community is. I had some great convos with other vendors as well as given some pointers as to which cons are worth the travel for. Not to mention, I really feel like the artist alley has a very diverse selection of artists. There are crafters, there are seamstresses, there are artists, there are people who make jewelry specifically for fursuit head. There was just so much variety. And it's just, it's really nice to see, honestly. Not to mention, we were all checking in on each other for things like water, watching tables while we ran off to do something, and sharing snacks. It was just overall very great vibes. Now, here's an issue I ran into later on when I wanted to sign up for the Saturday. So on Twitter, TFF said that their artist alley would not need a badge for sign up. But I ran into some issues there. Artist Alley Head said that in order to sign up for Saturday, I would have to give him my badge number. After confirming this with other people, yeah, apparently you do need to buy a badge. It was $80 for three days, which I'm honestly not even complaining about. I was just kind of confused and befuddled by the difference in the official Twitter statement versus the official Artist Alley Head statements. Honestly, $80 plus the $40 for the two days I was vending is honestly compared is nothing compared to anime con prices. Just something I wish I knew about so I didn't have to call my friend over to watch my booth while I went upstairs and wait for my bad to get registered for an undetermined amount of time. But let's talk about the actual Artist Alley experience. First of all, way more card transactions than I expected. Makes sense though. A lot of people are going to be wearing things that are cumbersome, so being able to tap their card is easier than rifling around for cash. I didn't have any connection issues at the hall, so all card transactions were good for me. However, if you're paranoid about being able to get connection to your card reader, I'd recommend bringing your own hotspot just in case. Now, I also discovered that I have an unexpected niche here that I did not really see at any other events. So most of my catalog is cat and bear stuff. Most people buy the cat stuff because obviously it's cats, I love cats, chances are you probably own a cat, we all love cats, okay? They're super cute, adorable, etc. But I don't have my bear stuff selling nearly at the same rate as the cat stuff. Apparently, at artist alleys and furry cons, there are not a lot of bear products or artwork at them. So they were just basically flying off my display. I appreciate every single buff gay bear man who bought a tiny little bear snacks pin or a bear sticker sheets. I hope that you all like them and I promise to make more. Other very popular items for me that typically aren't bestsellers were my lanyards. I ran out of my evolution lanyards halfway through Friday and then restocked them for Saturday only to have my boyfriend lanyards sell out on that Saturday. I also got a lot more sticker purchases than I normally get. There were also a lot more people utilizing the sticker deal over the individual stickers and I managed to sell out of quite a few sticker designs which was wonderful. I've been wanting to purge my stickers for a while now and the lovely attendees at TFF definitely helped me in making a dent in that stock. Something I didn't expect was that my apparel didn't sell as well as I expected it to. Still had several purchases, but I sell them at a faster rate at anime cons typically, so it was just surprising to me a little bit. I'm not sure if it's because it's not what the attendees are looking for in apparel or if it was the way I had them displayed. My fire cat print was the source of a lot of attention. Thank you to everyone who bought one. I hope you love it. I am sad I had to miss the Warrior Cats panel on Saturday as I was vending. But according to my friend, the panel was filled and they weren't even allowed to get into the line to attend it. I don't know what happens at Warrior Cats panels, but I am very curious. 
Do we just like watch maps together? I, I'm just. Do we just watch SSS Warrior Cats on the big screen? I would love to. I would love to know. Now I'm gonna talk about numbers in a vague sense. For the two days I vended, I paid forty dollars and then eighty dollars for the badge. So the booth cost for the two days is around one hundred twenty bucks. I did have the option to go on Sunday as an attendee. I wasn't going to apply for Sunday just because I had a different market on Sunday but I could technically just go as an attendee on that Sunday if I wanted to. I also had to get food because I was dumb and did not have time to pack my own lunch. So I paid roughly $20 a day, so another $40. I did manage to have my fiance drag me to the hotel and drop me off and go back home until it was time to pick me up, so I avoided any parking fees. However, if you're local and you're expecting to drive, expect around 20 a day to for parking. So overall, my total expenses for TFF was $160 in two days. And both days, I made the most amount of money I've ever made for an event individually. <laughs> Just to put into perspective, I vended for two days and paid $350 for a booth. And that was my most successful event. Both days is the equivalent of one day at TFF on both days for me. I made the same amount Saturday as I did Friday. However, I did stay an hour longer, so it was technically slower on Saturday for me than it was Friday. Whilst the lottery system is annoying in some aspects, I really do think that it is helpful in promoting sales that day and now. The attendees are aware that even though you're vending that day, doesn't mean you'll be there the other two days. I'm not going to give exact numbers just because people on the internet are weird, but I made enough money from those two days to pay for two months of my rent which is just actually trout chopping. I really cannot emphasize how critical this event was for me. I made a goof and I've been in debt for a hot minute, especially since I am technically unemployed and also doing school at the same time. So the attendees of TFF really helped me recuperate that loss that I've been feeling for months now. And I feel like I can finally experience a day without having to worry about my debt now. It was super great. Uh, while I won't be using that money to make more products for the time being, it really helped in alleviating this giant stressor off my shoulders. I definitely would consider traveling out of state to attend a furry con now. But let me go over some of the issues the event had. A convention wouldn't be a convention without some drama. So let's go ahead and talk about the TFF, Dealer's Den, and Artist Alley pages about AI. So on their website, they have a statement saying, AI generated artwork that includes or incorporates other person's works as a basis of their artwork is prohibited. Now, this phrase is kind of confusing if you know how the AI works. The AI isn't making these image on its own from imagination like you and I do, but more so creating an image that takes from other people's work to morph it into the prompt. There is no way to create an AI piece without taking someone else's work. Now, what TFF probably meant for the statement is you cannot sell AI artwork that has the artist's name in the prompt. Think something like furry wolf in the style of Leonardo da Vinci type of things. For more context, the dealer's den is separate from the artist alley. It is way more competitive and you have a permanent setup and you don't have to break down at the end of the day like you did for the artist alley dailies. And it's mainly reserved for things like crafters, fruit suit makers, and large apparel furry brands, etc. There is a giant sentiment I noticed amongst the furry community that places authenticity and creativity higher than most other subcultures. And I think it's because so much of the community is based on the foundation of being able to have custom art. So imagine the outrage people have when one of the highly coveted dealer den spots was taken by someone selling AI art and other material that was not their own. Once again, I cannot emphasize enough, Dealer's Den is meant to be a marketplace of original works. This isn't like vendors at an anime convention trying to sell you the same exact My Melody AliExpress backpack. These spots are supposed to be reserved for highly regarded artisans. So why was the spot given to someone who's using third party images and AI art? There's some proof there. Uh, TFF response to this was regarding reports of AI art in the den. Said artists bought these files to use in 3D printing being unaware they were AI generated and these have been removed regardless. Thank you for understanding. This really upset a lot of people uh, because it is a blatant lie and TFF did not remove the artist. Apparently the vendor was a vendor prior 
and they emphasize selling things like embroidery and floor and fursuits. So applying and getting in wasn't the issue here, it was the fact that they used their spot to sell things that they didn't make and use IPs that they don't own, which was another violation of the dealer den regardless. And the flakiness of the TFF response really is kind of discouraging. I'm hoping next year they have a more clear policy in regards to AI and hopefully they'll state that no AI is allowed like other cons have. But despite the poor response to the issue, I will say as an artist it was very heartwarming to see people online voice their concerns about this issue and how it's taking up space for real artisans. From what I can tell from the furry community, they want their artists to be able to keep drawing and selling their artwork and that is just a very heartwarming sentiment to me. Overall, this was the best event I've ever tabled at, and I've started vending in the summer of 2022, and being able to grow like this and experience this event is something I'll always be grateful for. I'm hoping their AI policy changes, and I'm hoping that maybe I'll be able to go back next year. By the way, if you like this video, um, it might still be happening, it might not, depending on when you're seeing this, but I currently have a Kickstarter for Bat Caps. If you are interested, you can go ahead and check it out in the link in the description. Thank you!